glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. And now, here's Charles Capps. Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast, where we're going to be talking about some things today that I think will be interesting to you. I call this off-the-cuff stuff, <laughs> where we rightly divide the Word of God. Now, see, Jesus never made anything hard. It's religion that made the Bible hard to understand. Jesus made things very easy to understand. And when we get into the sixth chapter of Matthew, we find Jesus teaching about prayer. And I want you to listen to what Jesus said. Verse 7, Matthew 6, verse 7, Jesus said, And when you pray, use not vain repetition, as the heathen do, for they think they shall be heard for their much saying. Now, you know, you've heard a lot of people say, well, now you just got to keep on praying, you know. If, if we could just get more people to pray, and if we could just get 20,000 people to pray. In. Now, folks, it's not the amount of people you have praying, and, and it's not the, the more you pray, it's whether you pray in faith. The prayer of faith is what God answers. Faith makes prayer work. Prayer doesn't make faith work. It is faith, confidence, believing you received. John said it this way, If we know that he heareth us, then we know we have the petition that we desired of him. In other words, if you know God heard you, you know you have it. Because Jesus said, uh, If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, folks, you just can't get around that. It's in the Bible. It's there. It's established. But now listen to what Jesus said in the sixth chapter of Matthew. When ye pray, use not vain repetition as the heathen do, for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. Now I know this is contrary to what a lot of people have thought and, and prayed in the past. But if we're going to take God's word for it, let's take what Jesus said. I mean, if there's ever any doubt, I always said it this way, if there's ever any doubt, read the red in the Bible. You see, this is in red. This is what Jesus said. And when you get into the red, he says, I speak only that which I hear my father say. So he is telling us things that he knows from his father. He says, Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your heavenly Father knoweth what you have need of before you ask him. Now, he knows we have need of it, but you must ask him, but you ask in faith. But what he's telling you is you don't go and pray the same prayer the next morning if you pray it in faith because uh, of the principles of prayer. And uh, Mark 11, 23, uh, 24 says, Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them. Now, when are you going to believe that? When you pray. Not when you receive them. When you pray and believe you receive them. If you believe you receive them, you won't pray about it the same way the next morning. You might pray the prayer of thanksgiving and praise for it. Uh, so this, this is the point I want us to see, that Jesus is telling us how to pray accurately. Now, I want us to go from there over to the uh, 18th chapter of Luke, and this is what I call a, a sacred cow scripture. <laughs> now, let me explain that a little bit. Over in India, you know, they have a religion over there that they believe that their grandmother may have come back as a cow so they wouldn't dare eat the cow. They worship the cow instead of eat it, and they, people die and starve to death and wouldn't eat the cow. Now, let me show you something here. Religious people have certain what I call sacred cow scriptures that hold them in bondage. You see, the very thing they need the most is the meat for protein. They, they suffer malnutrition because they're misled into believing that uh, their grandmother or, or some, their uncle or somebody came back as a cow, so they, they wouldn't dare eat the cow. Now, a lot of Christians worship the scripture but wouldn't dare eat it or assimilate it and meditate on it and get it on the inside of them. Jesus said, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask what you will, pray what you will, and it shall be done. In other words, you've got to assimilate the Word of God as if it were food. You get it on the inside of you. Now, when you meditate the Word, let's read this Scripture, because these scripture, this Scripture here, this parable that Jesus tells, is actually uh, a parable that says the very opposite of what most people thought it said. 
Now let's begin with verse 1 in Matthew, uh, Luke 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. Well, now somebody said, see there, Brother Caps, he says, just always keep praying. Yeah, but he didn't say about the same thing. Now that's where we miss it. We think he's talking about praying about the same thing. Now just take, let's interpret the Bible with the Bible. John says, uh, if, if we know that he heard us, then we know we have the petition that we desired of him. Well, wouldn't that fit with this? In other words, if we pray the prayer of faith, we know that we have it, and then we wouldn't pray it again. So he said, uh, let's read it again, and he spake a parable unto them, to this end that men ought always to pray and not faint. In other words, don't, don't give up or don't faint and give up, in other words, if you prayed a prayer, say for finances, and you haven't had all of that prayer answered, you don't have abundance of finances yet, and there comes up a physical problem, then you wouldn't say, well, I, you know, I've already prayed about that, and I don't have that answer, so I'm not going to pray anymore until I get that answered. No, he said you ought always to pray. Don't base it on that. Just rest assured that that's coming, and go ahead and pray about the other thing. He's not talking about praying the same thing over and over because if he is, he's violating everything that Jesus taught about prayer. And we know he, he doesn't do that. Now let's, let's start verse 2 saying, now here's what he said. There was in a city a judge which feared not God, nor neither regarded man. Now in this parable, if, if you will analyze what, what a lot of people believe about this, they seem to believe that the unjust judge represents God. Now let me ask you something. Just ask yourself this question, how in the world could an unjust judge that feared not God nor man could represent God? Well, the, the answer is obvious. He couldn't possibly represent God, but you know who it could represent? It could represent the devil. He feared not God nor man. That, that is a profile of the devil. Now watch this. Now, now you know, don't turn me off. It's going to turn out all right. Stay with me. He said, uh, And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. Now, most people will tell you that she just kept coming. And I don't know where they get it. Maybe it's the Amplified that, that puts something in there or some other translation that puts something in there. Uh, that, that would indicate that. But now we must interpret this with the Word of God and Jesus teaching concerning prayer. Use not vain repetition as the heathen do. So we have to analyze this and say that here was a w widow in that city and she came unto him saying, didn't say she kept coming, said she came to him saying, now, some, some would say, well, now, Brother Caps, that means that, that, that she came to him saying, and the saying means that she kept coming to him and saying. No, that, that's, that's not what it's revealing. You see, I see in the Scripture on occasion or two where it says, Jesus came to them saying. Now, that didn't mean that he walked up there and said it. Then he walked back and come back and said it again and come back and said it again and come back and said it again. It meant that he was walking while he's talking. He came to them saying. It's telling you what he's saying while he's walking toward them. Now, let's, let's use that here and look at what he really said. She came to him saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. Now, if you'll notice, this is not a request. This is a demand. She's making a demand. Now, the widow, this is a widow woman. Now, in, in the Israel, the widow, she had, <laughs> she had no power behind her to enforce this. I mean, there, there's no one that'll take up her case. Uh, she, she is a widow. And uh, it says he would not for a while. But afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her lest, now here is a key word, lest, by her continual coming she weary me. Now, now let's analyze this word by word and help you understand what's being said here. 
Yet, uh, well, he says, though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me. Now notice, at fr when she came, he's only troubled. He's not yet weary. But if this widow keeps coming to him, he, she will weary him. Now I want to say that again. He's only troubled now. He's troubled in his head. Remember, he said he would not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself. Afterwards he said this on the inside of him. He said, uh, Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. If she continues to come, she will weary me. Now, this widow evidently represents a child of God, God's children. You get over into the book of Isaiah, you find that, that God said that, that the widow shall have more children than, the, than the, the married woman. In other words, it seems to be children of God. Because, you see, uh, she came to this man, this unjust judge, demanding. Now, we know that the Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace when it comes to prayer. But now notice, she's not talking to God. She's talking to an unjust judge. You can in no wise uh, associate this unjust judge with God. It will not fit. Absolutely will not. But it would fit for the devil, wouldn't it? So he's saying, she came and demanded that she be avenged of her adversaries. Could it be, and I believe this is what the, is being alluded to here, the fact that we, a children of God, have the ability, not within ourselves, well, you know, we don't have the ability within ourselves, but because of the name of Jesus, because of the power of the Word of God behind us and the authority of what we speak, that we can come boldly to the throne of grace, and we can decree a thing, and it shall be established to us. You find that in the book of Job. Job said, uh, decree a thing, and it shall be established to you. And we have authority to use the name of Jesus. That name is above every name above principalities, powers, and the rulers of the darkness of this world, Satan cannot stand before the name of Jesus. So here's a widow woman that came to him. Now, what, what, if, what if this woman had have come to this man and said, now, you know, I don't want to bother you, but, but uh, I know you're busy, and, and if it wouldn't be too much trouble, if you could, if, if you would do this for me, get my adversary, these adversaries off of me, what do you think would have happened? You know yourself, as people say in the world, you know, the squeaky wheel is the one that gets the grease. I mean, if you had a washing machine that, that's broke down or a dryer or something, and you went to the appliance dealer and said, uh, uh, you know, if it's not too much trouble, would you mind coming out and looking at that? I know that you may be busy. It might be two weeks before you can get there, but if you could, I'd sure appreciate it, you know. But I understand if you can't. Who you think is going to get the first call or one that comes in and says, I demand that you come and fix this thing and, and stop what it's doing. I can tell you which one he's going to go to first. The one that came boldly. And uh, that's what the Bible teaches. Come boldly before the throne of grace. Well, we know that the unjust judge doesn't represent the throne of grace, but we have authority through the name of Jesus. We're children of God. We have the authority to use the name of Jesus. The Bible says that we have authority. Jesus said I, I, to Peter, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Now, that means that whatever you have authority to bind on earth must already be bound out of heaven. Whatever you have authority to loose on this planet must already be loosed in heaven. In other words, you can't bind something that's not God's will for. But if it's bound out of heaven, you have authority to bind it if you can find it in the Word of God. Now, you notice right here, that it says, Yet because this widow troubleth me, he's troubled in his head, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. In other words, he's going to be weary if she keeps coming. And the Lord said, now listen to what Jesus said about it. Hear what the unjust judge saith. Hear what the unjust judge saith. 
And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry night and day unto him, though he bear long with them? Now someone said, well, see there, he's, he's talking about crying night and day. Not about the same thing, though. See, here's where we jump to conclusions and read things into the Scripture that's not there. He's, if, if he is referring to crying to God night and day about the same thing, you're in unbelief. You're in stark unbelief if you're crying to God and begging God and praying for God to do the same thing over every day, every night, all day and all night. You're in stark unbelief. The prayer of faith is what God answers. And remember what John said, Beloved, if our hearts condemn us not, then we have confidence in Him. And we know whatsoever we ask of Him, we receive of Him, because we keep His commandments and do those things which are pleasing in His sight. Now, it didn't mean that you're going to get your prayer answered because you do good things, but because you're obedient to what the Word says, and you do those things which are pleasing in His sight, then it means that you have a clear conscience before God. And then whatsoever we ask, we know we receive. If we know that He heard us, we know that we have the petition that we desired of Him. Well, we know that He hears the prayer of faith based on the authority of the Word of God. So if you know that He heard you, you wouldn't pray about it again. You would not the same way. Like I said, you could give the prayer of thanksgiving and praise. Thank you, Father. I prayed yesterday morning. I believe I received, and I want to thank you that I believe I've received, and I'm standing fast on the Word of God. Don't pray the same prayer over and over. Now, folks, I'm telling you something that it took me 40 years to learn, and, and I'll tell you the truth. Before I understood this, uh, I used to pray just a scatter load. God and save all the sick, heal uh, uh, save all the lost, heal all the sick, you know, bless all the missionaries, and uh, didn't really, you know, just kind of shoot a scatter load. Uh, somebody said, what are you basing that on? Well, uh, nothing in particular. And let me tell you something, folks. When you base your prayer on nothing in particular, that's just about what you go get, nothing in particular. You've got to base it on the authority of the Word. And when you come to the throne of grace and say, now, Lord, here's what you said in your word. You said that if I have a pure conscience, if my heart doesn't condemn me, uh, and I do those things that are pleasing in your sight. See, that's what Paul was talking about when he said, uh, holding the mystery of faith in a pure conscience. If you have a pure conscience before God, you believe you receive of God because Jesus said, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. If you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. The Greek actually says that stronger than that. It says, the Greek says, if I don't have it, I'll make it for you. <laughs> That's pretty good, isn't it? So here's the unjust judge that he was only trouble, but he said, if she keeps coming, I'll be wearied lest by her continual coming. Now notice the continual part, part is linked to lest by her continual coming. In other words, it is indicating that if she continually comes, which in the context of this, I can see no indication that she had continually come. Now there was no doubt that she would have continually come because uh, what do you think troubled the man? i tell you what I think troubled him. Uh, she didn't come in there, you know, kind of kicking the ground and saying, well, I, I just hate to ask you this. She came in there with her little finger sticking out toward him and said to him, uh, I'm telling you right now that you avenge me. Get your adversaries off of me and do it now. And it was the tone of her voice. I mean, he tried to go to sleep, and he could hear, she could hear that squeaky voice saying, get those adversaries off of me, I demand it now, and that little bony finger pointing at him, and he said, I'll do it, lest by her continual coming she weary me. That would weary a fellow, wouldn't it, if, if you had to put up with that every day? Well, there's no doubt that she would have continued, but there is no indication that she did. Now, notice what Jesus said. Hear what the unjust judge saith. Now, folks, this actually is giving you a contrast. This is a parable of contrast between what God would do and what the devil would do. In other words, it's good news to you, telling you if you make a demand on the devil based on the authority of the Word of God, he will avenge you or he will back off of some things. 
And some of you have just laid down and played dead, you know. <laughs> Somebody said, yeah, but you know, Brother Caps, the Bible said the devil is as a roaring lion going about seeking whom he may devour. Yeah, that's what it said. That's what Peter said. He's as one. Didn't say he was a roaring lion. He's as a roaring lion. In other words, he's all mouth. He has no authority here. We're born on this planet. We have authority here. And uh, he's all mouth. God broke his teeth out. Did you know that God broke the devil's teeth out? The Bible says that he break, God breaks the teeth of the ungodly. Wouldn't he qualify? I'd say he broke his teeth out. So he's all mouth. But you know what the problem is? Some folks are just so soft and pliable, he can just gum them to death. <laughs> he doesn't have to have any teeth. I mean, they just lay down and play dead when the devil comes along. No, do like this widow woman did. Begin to demand your rights. Demand that these things change. You have authority by the Word of God and backing by the Word of God. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Make a demand by the promise of God and the Word of God. Now, Jesus goes on to say, Then I tell you that He will avenge them speedily. Now, if he's teaching us to just keep on coming, keep on coming back, keep on coming back, why does he say God will avenge his elect speedily? He says he will avenge them speedily. In other words, you won't have to keep coming to God if you're in faith, if you're operating in the authority of the Word of God and know what you believe and believe what you know and faith is in your heart and the Word abides in you, ask what you will and it shall be done. He will avenge speedily. He will do things speedily. It's a contrast to how the devil does things and how the God does things. Now, you know, I know it's a sacred cow scripture, and some of you don't want to believe it yet, but get your Bible out and study it. It's here. He said, I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith on the earth? Now, what does that mean? When the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith on the earth? In other words, will he find this kind of faith on the earth? that God's people, see, could be referring to Israel because uh, Israel is considered a widow because, you know, uh, divorced from God. And uh, it could be for Israel uh, it directly, but it, indirectly it would be associated with us. We have authority to operate in this thing because he said, I will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find this kind of faith on the earth? that you would take authority and stand up against the devil, against the wicked men, uh, against the, the evildoers, and say, we've stood all of this, we're going to stand. We stand on the Word of God, and this is going to stop, and it's going to stop now. It's going to stop now. I remember several years ago, we had a situation where everywhere I'd go, an air conditioning would go out. Went out in my car, went out in my airplane, went out in, the, uh, in my tractors, was checked in a hotel, and the air conditioner went out. Went down to eat at a restaurant, and the air conditioner went out. And I looked over at my wife, and I said, this is satanic. We're going to stop this. When we get back to the hotel room, we're going to take authority over this thing. And I, I approached it like this woman did. I said, in the name of Jesus, I break the power of satanic oppression over uh, air conditioners and these things, and it's going to stop now. And I demand that it stop now in the name of Jesus. Well, never had anything near like that since. Well, I could have gone on and just let it happen. That thing was supernatural. It wasn't something that just happened. It was supernatural. It was the devil trying to get me stirred up to where I'd be so out of sorts. I couldn't preach the Word everywhere I went. Well, you need to know that God's on your side. I'll tell you what, the widow and the unjust judge is a contrast by how the devil acts and how God acts, and God will avenge you speedily. But you make a demand on the devil, and he'll have to get off your territory. Hallelujah. Well, I don't know whether it helps you or not, but I preach myself happy. Now, we have an offer this week that I want to uh, make available. Now, we offered, uh, I think, uh, last week, I think we offered this uh, book, The Releasing the Ability of God Through Prayer. But uh, I know some of you, you just, uh, you know, you don't have time to read. You're, you're on the road going here and there and yonder. So, uh, uh, we want to make the tapes available. This is offer number 
2012 releasing the ability of God through prayer, both the book and the tapes. Now, this is a talking book. Uh, I, I read this on tape, so you can hear it. You can have uh, uh, both the tape and the book for $16. That's offer number 2012, releasing the ability of God through prayer. And I'll tell you, it'll help you. Uh, if you get a hold of this, because we're talking about uh, in this book, in fact, I want to mention this, uh, in this book we have a chapter called uh, Confession Brings Possession. You know, if you confess the Word of God, you can possess the promise of God. And also we talk about the widow and the unjust judge in here. Now this book is uh, 153 pages, something like that, uh, dealing with prayer and uh, dealing with importunity of prayer. And we talked about this on one of the other broadcasts, how that the man that came for the bread at midnight, most people say that he just kept knocking on the door, just kept knocking, kept knocking, until the guy got up and gave it. Well, that, you know, that's not in the Bible. That's what most people thought it said. But you see, when you say persistent faith, you've changed the meaning of the word persistence. When you say persistent faith, you're talking about faith that asks and just stands there and stands there until he receives. Now remember what Paul said, when you've done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth. In other words, knowing what the Word of God said about it, that you can have what you ask for, if you believe it. All things, whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Now, if you know that when you ask, you know you receive it, then you don't go pray for it again and beg and bawl and squall before God and say, now God, you know, I, I've been praying for three weeks. I'll pray three more weeks. No, that violates everything Jesus taught about prayer. So you need this book and this tape. It's available to you for $16. It's offer number 2012 or 2012, uh, both two audio cassettes, and the book. We have a toll-free order line. It's 1-877-396-9400. That's 1-877-396-9400. Or you can write to me, Charles Caps, Box 69, England, Arkansas, zip code 72046. And it's $16 for both the book and the tape. Well, until next time, this is Charles Caps reminding you that the enemy is defeated, God is exalted, and yes, Jesus is coming soon. We are glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. To order the product offered on today's program, call 1-877-396-9400. For more information about Charles Capps Ministries or for a schedule of meetings, write to Charles Capps Ministries, P.O. Box 69, England, Arkansas, 72046. This broadcast has been sponsored by Charles Capps Ministries and our partners in this area.